What is going on, guys? We are back with another video and a bit of a different setup. I got a new webcam, I got a microphone, so hopefully everything's going to be a bit better quality. I'm pretty much sitting in the dark, so I think the webcam is going to be a little bit, um, probably a little bit noisy, but I'm sure you guys can live with that. Anyway, today I'm back with how to create a subsurface material in Redshift, and this is the second time I've recorded this intro because I haven't used OBS before and I forgot to swap the scene, so. Let me just run you guys through what I'm going to be making today, so, boom, this is it. I posted this animation on Instagram the other day, people seemed to like it, so I took it a step further, I made a little mini tutorial on Instagram, so you can actually go through and just see how I set this up step by step um, if you don't want to watch the video, but I would love if you would stay and watch this video with me and go through this journey with me guys, really appreciate it. Anyway, on top of that, one step further. If you don't want to watch the video, you don't even want to go to Instagram, you don't want to check my Instagram out, you don't want to watch the tutorial on there, you can just go to my Gumroad and you can just download this project file. Simples. It's the exact same project, the same exact file I used when I made the animation. I haven't tweaked it, I haven't taken anything out. It's got the lights in there, it's got the textures in there, it's got everything you need. It's even got my little initials in Boston to the soap, so you can take that home, cherish it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much everything. So we're just going to jump into the video. I'm going to go back to the other recording I made when I actually did the tutorial because I'm re-recording this intro because, like I said, I messed it up. Um, yeah, if you enjoy the video, hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe if you want to see more content. Hit the notification bell. Um, and that's pretty much everything. It really helped me out. I'd really appreciate it. And that's enough of me waffling. Let's get straight into the video. Cool. And this is the scene I've got set up. So I think it's important for me to go through the lighting first. Um, when it comes to subsurface materials, lighting is quite an important factor as well as scale. And I must admit the scale of this object is a bit, um, it's probably a bit too small, but I don't know actually. It's six centimeters by three centimeters, this cube. I don't really know how big a bar of soap is, but I don't know how big six centimeters. Like. Maybe like that six cent. Uh, it probably is. Probably is roughly about right. Probably roughly the size of a bar of soap. It might even be smaller than that. Anyway, scale and lighting are important. So I'm going to go through these lights one by one. Um, let's start with our key light. So our key light is the one behind it. Uh, that's basically letting in the majority of the light. And when it comes to subsurface materials, HDRs aren't really going to be the one for you. Um, you probably want to use area lights or if they're pardon me if they're in an environment um, have your HDR set up for the environment whatever whatever but then probably creep some area lights in behind it and just set them on that one object just to give it some nice light um, that's probably what I'd recommend but in this case when it's just by itself which can use area lights so we've got our key light here that's basically shining through the back of this object which is what is driving most of kind of the overall look of this render I suppose. Um, if I was to actually put a plain material on this you would see that what it's actually really doing. Uh, so let's bang that on there. So you can see literally it's just giving us a rim light but obviously with the subsurface material uh, it's giving us a really nice glow in the middle. The next light we have is the fill light. So this isn't really doing too much this is just this light here. Um, it's just helping to kind of brighten it up just a tiny bit uh, so it's just filling it that's why it's called a fill light and then finally we have our reflection light so that's just above the object and it's giving us this, this nice reflection here and that is basically the light setup there's nothing fancy I haven't changed any of these settings uh, I don't think I'll just quickly check them okay so the fill light I've just turned off reflections because I'm guessing yeah I was getting this hot spot here so yeah that's basically the light setup um, let's just jump straight into making the material I think I've touched on everything there cool so I'm gonna whack this material I just made on there just a plain redshift material and the first thing I would do apart from scaling this window down I need to get a proper like layout for this because I hate having to tweak this every time um, first thing I do turn the diffuse off turn the reflection off so now we've got nothing we're just in complete darkness uh, but we're gonna come down to subsurface and the first thing we do 
is turn on the scatter scale. So I'm just going to crank this up and immediately you can already see the subsurface coming into effect. Um, so you can crank this up. Basically this is going to be like the intensity I suppose of the subsurface. So kind of how much light it's letting through I, su I suppose. Um, but the thing is with all these settings they all kind of work in conjunction with each other so you'll see when we go through. Um, but yeah, the more we crank it up, the more light that's getting let through and the more blown out it's going to get. Now, this is going to sound a bit outlandish, but I'm going off the settings I use for the other material. I'm going to put 0 0.08 because when we get to the next step, it's all going to work out. It's going to be fine. But at the moment, we're just looking at a white cube. So we're going to come to the transmittance color. And this is basically going to be the color that gets absorbed by the light so let's change this to our lovely green that we had last time um, probably something maybe like that mm, yeah yeah something like that and uh, let's crank up the absorption scale so ooh, 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 ooh. so the more we crank it up basically the more uh, the more the object absorbs the light and the more we can see the color that we have plugged into the transmittance color, if that makes sense. So the, absor the absorption scale, I suppose, is kind of like the saturation slash how much the light absorbs it. I'm trying to not get too technical with this, but yeah, so the more you crank that up, the more you're going to see the color that you've plugged into here. And we can change this to like an orange. Um, that's basically that. So I think... I had that at like 0 0.6, which again looks really blown out, but we move on to the next step, the scatter co-off, co-off, co I don't know, anyway, whatever. So this is basically, and I'm looking at my phone because I've written notes down for this. This is basically kind of like the, let's just change the color. Basically this is the color that when the light hits the object, it bounces light back out and this is the color that it's going to bounce back out. So. I'll probably change this to more of like a kind of like a lime greeny kind of color. Maybe. Let's uh let's see how it looks. Make that like 70. Boom. So that's now filled in that white kind of highlight we had with the color we've plugged in because when the light hits the object, it bounces the light back off, and this is the light that it bounces back. So if I change this to like an orange we've now kind of set the whole tone to this orange but we've also got the green here because that's the color that's being absorbed so if I was actually to crank this up probably not that much we're getting more of those green tones because the lights being absorbed more by the object and we're seeing more of that transmittance color we put in so yeah hopefully that makes sense uh, let's change this back to like that lime green um, that actually looks quite nice I'm straying away from the settings I had but it looks good. You can play with this and just figure out what look you want to go for. Uh, okay, so the final setting is the phase setting. So this is basically like uh, how the object interacts with the light. Oh, thank you for appreciating my bottle CGI um, project. Oh yeah, I've updated my Behance, so go check it out if you want to check it out. Uh, I've got basically some projects on there of some bottle renders I did, and I've got actually some behind the scenes of how I set it up. Uh, so it might be helpful, it might be useful. I've also got the speed outs on the YouTube channel, so just a quick little plug there. Uh, back to the tutorial. So the phase is basically how the light interacts with the object um, and how it redir redirects that light. So if I crank this up, you can see how we're completely changing the look of this material. So if we crank it down you can see basically the light is just hitting the front of it and bouncing back and we're not really getting much coming from behind it but um, if we crank it up we're getting more of that backlit look to it so you can see the light is coming in from behind getting absorbed um, and not much is really happening on the front side of it so I went for about 0 0.6 when I made the material um, so it basically looks like we've got some of that thickness. We've got that kind of glow around the edge, um, which is our scatter quaff, co-off color. Um, and then in the middle here, we've got our 
transmittance color, which is dr driven by the absorption scale. So you can kind of see how all these settings work with each other. Um, but yeah, those kind of look pretty decent to me. And then the final step I had was to come to my material node, um, we're just going to type in text for texture and drag that in. And I used this material here, which is also included in the project. Uh, it's basically just, basically just some little specks and hairs and whatnot. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure my OBS was all good, you know. Um, some specks and hairs, we're going to click that and drop that in to the SS amount. So, boom. Now, the scatter scale, I believe, yep, is being driven by the texture. So basically it's taking the black and white values to basically drive how um, intense that um, transparency of the material is. So we're still getting our dark patches, which is cool, but also where the texture has those white bits, uh, we're getting some of these highlights here where it's not as um, not as transparent, not as translucent. So we get that really nice texture to it. And when you start to like rotate around this object, let's see if it can preview. Um, we just get some really nice details in there. And you can see how we've been able to create that sense of thickness because we've got that glow around the outside and then this thicker part in the section where thicker part, thicker part in the middle, uh, darker part. So it makes it seem like we've got some thickness to the object. Um, and that's pretty much how I made the material. There's a few other things I did, like I basically UV unwrapped the cube and then went in and applied like a little displacement to it. Um, let me back it up so you can see it. Oh yeah, one final thing. Let's go back, let's go back, take it back a step. So we've done all that, we've set up the subsurface, it's all, it's all good, it's all Gucci. Uh, but then we can start to add back in the reflection. So because I've used such a small object and my lights are so intense, uh, I don't need to crank this up too much, but if I just turn that up and then turn the roughness up a little bit, let's just slide it, it's easier. Um, we can start to add in some of that reflection and then I'll probably just change the reflection color to like match the color of the object, so give it more of this green look, it just helps to blend it into the material a bit better. Um, and yeah, now we've just got some reflection in there, so before it's like that. Just helps brighten it up a bit. Obviously, soap has got some sort of reflection to it, not much, but uh, yeah. And that's basically it. So, hopefully, you guys found this helpful. I know I didn't dive into the multi SSS, but I just wanted to touch on the subsurface in general. Um, I think that was probably a good place to start, and it kind of shows you that it's not probably as complicated as some people may think it is. Um, it's fairly simple, there's not too many settings you can play with that can make it go horribly wrong. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you guys found that helpful. Oh, that's my alarm. I woke up early before work to get this video done. Um, so yeah, I beat you to it. Um, but yeah, that's everything. Again, if you want to go download the project file, it's free. It's on my Gumroad page. I'll whack a link in the description or something like that. Um, and go follow me on Instagram because I'm always, well not always, it's the first one actually, but I'm going to start dropping more little mini tutorials like this on Instagram, so if you don't have kind of the attention span to sit down and watch however long this video is going to be, then maybe that's a good alternative. Uh, I know I struggle to watch long videos, um, but yeah, go check out the gram, go download the project file, and have a great day, and hit subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Sweet. Cool, that's everything. I'm signing out. Let me know if you want to see any more tutorials, what type of tutorials, uh, and we'll go from there. Sweet. All right, cool. There's more stuff I want to say, but I'm just waffling now. Sweet. All right. I'm actually saying bye this time. Bye. Catch you in the next video. Peace.